Hi friends, I'm Daniel Roth from the Blazor team. In this video, we'll add some data to our Blazor web app by adding a simple data model and connecting it to a database. Now, for this exercise, I'm actually going to use Visual Studio so I can take advantage of its built-in scaffolding support, which will let me quickly generate a bunch of Blazor pages based on a data model. In order to follow along, you're going to need Visual Studio version 17.9 or later. OK, so I've got Visual Studio 17.9 here installed and ready to go. Let's go ahead and create a new project. And we'll go ahead and create a Blazor web app for the template that we're going to use. And for the project name, let's call this Blazor Movie App. We'll see why in a second. And then let's go ahead and click Next. Now for these options, I'm just going to keep the defaults. This is where we can select which uh, interactive render mode we want to use and at what scope we want interactivity, either per page, component, or globally. I'll just keep the defaults for those. All right, great. So Visual Studio's created our Blazor web app for us. Now to add some data to this Blazor web app, I'm going to add a simple data model to this project. So I'm just going to right click and add an existing item that I've already written up. I think I've got it here in my documents folder, this movie class. And I'll just show you what this looks like. So this is just a simple uh, class that represents a movie. It's got an ID and then a bunch of properties for a movie, like the title, release date, genre, and price. Okay? And what I want to do is I want to create some, some pages based off of this movie type that let me add movies to a database, view all the movies in the database, edit those movies, see their details, and delete them. Okay, so basic uh, CRUD operations, create, read, update, and delete. Okay, and in order to do that, I'm just going to use the built-in Blazor Scaffolder. So I'm going to go to my Pages folder. I'm going to right-click and select Add New Scaffolded Item. Okay, and then there's a bunch of scaffolders, scaffolders in here. The one I'm going to select is the Razor Components, which are Blazor Components, using Entity Framework and all the, the CRUD pages. So let's go ahead and add that. All right, so we've got this nice little UI that we can use now. We can select which page templates we want to scaffold. We can scaffold any individual pages, like the create page, the edit page, and so on. Or if we select CRUD, that will then just generate all of the pages for me. I then select my data model. Let's select the movie class that we just added. And now we need uh, an Entity Framework Core DB context. This is the type that uh, Entity Framework Core uses to connect your .NET objects to a database. And I don't have one in this project, so I'm going to hit this plus sign to just create a new DB context, and we'll just uh, accept the default name. We can also then uh, pick which uh, data provider we want to use, SQL Server, SQLite, and so on. I'm just going to use the default, which is SQL Server. And we'll go ahead and click Add, and let Visual Studio do a whole bunch of, of hard work for me. It's going to inspect my data model and then generate code for each of those pages uh, for the different uh, CRUD operations for interacting with data. Cool. Looks like it's done. All right, so if we look in the Pages folder, we now have this Movie Pages directory, which has all of my generated scaffolded pages. Index, edit, details, delete, and create. Now, uh, before I run this app, uh, I first need to set up the database with the new database schema using Entity Framework Core. And the way you do that is by adding and applying a migration. A day, uh, EF Core migration is a way that you can uh, set up the schema in the database, and it will even create the database for you if you haven't uh, already set it up. So to, I'm going to use the, uh, this little command console inside of Visual Studio to run the EF Core commands. And there's just two of them. They're pretty easy. So first, we need to add a migration, which is just some code that sets up our database schema. You can also use it to evolve the schema over time if you make further changes to your database schema. And I'm just going to give it a name called Movies. And we'll let that run. There it goes. And now we need to update our database with our migration that we just generated. So update database. And that will create the database and get it all set up with the with the schema for our movie type. Cool. So now we should be able to run our application. All right, so there's our default Blazor web app. Where are all our movies? Well, let's go look at the code. So in the index.razor page, you can see up at the top that this has a route of slash movies. We haven't created a link for that anywhere, but we should just be able to browse directly to it. So let's go to slash movies. 
And there it is. All right, so we have a simple table with columns for each of the properties of our movie. We don't have any movies yet, but we can go ahead and create one. Let's add a, a movie to our database. Um, how about ET? And I think that was June 11th. It was in the 80s. All, all the best movies come from the 80s. <laughs> you know, my, my personal opinion. Uh, this was sci-fi-ish. And I don't know, we'll make up a price for this movie. And we'll go ahead and create that. And now that movie shows up in our database listing. We can view its details by clicking this details link. And we can edit the, the movie. Like maybe we decide this movie needs to be a little bit more expensive. And we can save that. And that shows up in our table. And we can also delete movies from the database. All right, so we got all the basic operations created for us. Uh, you know, create, read, update, delete, and viewing the whole, the whole list without me having to really write any code. All right, let's go take a look at the code and see how it's working. So in that um, index.razor page, that's the page that's showing the, the list of movies. We can see here that this actually isn't just rendering a plain old uh, HTML table. This is using QuickGrid, the, our built-in data grid component for Blazor. So QuickGrid is a way that you can take some data from a variety of sources. Like here you can see it's loading the data directly from my, using my DB context. Uh, it can load data from a variety of sources and display it in a grid, and it supports all sorts of nice features so that uh, users can you know, page through that data, sort it, and filter it. Uh, let's, let's play around with this a little bit. For example, uh, right now, you know, the column titles, it looks like QuickGrid is just generating those based off of the property names from our data model, which means this release date looks a, a little bit weird. Uh, let's snap this to the side. And let's see if we can fix that up. So on the, um, well, we need a little bit more room for our code. On the release date column, let's add a title property. And let's make this one titled release date with a proper space. So it looks like you know, proper English. And we'll go ahead and, and hot reload that into the app. And there it goes. It just applied. And now our column looks, looks really nice. Now the format for our uh, release dates looks a little verbose. Can we change that? Yeah, let's, let's add a format. Uh, parameter right here, and let's make the format month, month, day, day, year, 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 year. And again, we'll just save that to a hot reload that into the application, and there we go. Now we've got a you know nicely formatted uh, release date. Cool, that looks good. Uh, we can also make um, these columns sortable, and that's really easy. You just add a sortable uh, property to the attribute to the to the column, and we'll say this is sortable true. So we'll go ahead and save that. Let's go back. So now you can see that uh, it's a little bit faint, but you can see that the title column has this uh, highlighting on it, as, like as if I can click it. Uh, and the other columns don't have that. Unfortunately, well, of course, I don't have, I only have one movie. So let's, let's create another movie just so we can see what's going on. Let's add like Ghostbusters. And what was I wrote down all the, the, the release dates for these things so I don't get them wrong. So this was June 8th, 19. 84, it looks like. And this was um, comedy, and we'll make up a price for it. We'll add that to the database. OK, so now we've got two movies. Can I, can I sort them? Still not working. Ah, that's because, by default, this page is using static server-side rendering. Do you remember we learned about all of the Blazor component render modes? In order to uh, allow QuickGrid to handle the on-click event when we click on that title column, we need to enable an interactive render mode for this component. No problem, we can do that. Let's go into our index.razor page, and we'll just add up here at the top a render mode, razor directive, and we'll say let's use interactive server rendering for this component. And we'll go ahead and restart the app so that that appropriately applies. All right, cool. And now if I filter, yeah, uh, sorry, the sort, not filter. Yep, it's now uh, you know, sorting one way, and then we can invert the, the sort order as well. Cool, so that's sorting, really easy. Um, we can also do some uh, pagination. Let's add pagination to this uh, quick grid. Let's go back to the code. To add pagination, we just need to add a paginator component. Again, another built-in component, a companion component to our quick grid. And you can see it's showing me a little error here. It's saying that the paginator expects a value for the parameter state, but we haven't provided one. So we need to provide a state parameter. What is the state parameter? We can just check that out. And it looks like this is supposed to be a pagination state instance. So let's go ahead and create one of those. We'll add a code block, and we'll create a pagination state instance. We'll just call it state, and then we'll new that up. 
And this is what allows us to you know, tweak some settings for how pagination works. Like we can specify how many items per page we want. And uh, right now we only have two items, so maybe we'll only have one item per page, <laughs> which is a little ridiculous, but uh, at least shows that it's, it's working. All right, and then so we can just take this state uh, instance and pass it into our paginator. And th this is how the paginator is going to coordinate with the quick grid component. So we also need to pass the state instance up here to the quick grid uh, component by setting this pagination parameter. OK, so let's go ahead and run that. Looks good. OK, so now we see this pagination widget down at the bottom. And we have our first page with ET and then our second page with, with Ghostbusters. Cool. So that's how easy it is to add pagination. We can also add some, some filtering. Like if we want to be able to filter, like search for specific movies by, by name or using a, a filter query. Uh, to do that, what we're going to do is let's take this title column. And that's where we'll, where we'll add the filter. And I'm just going to give it a closing uh, tag like so, so I can put some content inside of it. And for the content, I'm going to use the column options uh, parameter. And this is like a little widget of uh, UI that you can attach to a column heading. And what I'm going to attach here is just a div with an input in it. And this input is what I'm going to use for my, uh, to capture the filter string that I want to use. All right? Now I need something to bind that input to. We're going to use some data binding. So let's add a string here for our title filter. And we'll have it be empty string by, by default. And then now for the input, let's, uh, let's make this a search input. So it has, oops, uh, search input. And then we'll at bind this to our title filter string. So now the value of the input and the value of title filter should always be the same. I also want this to update um, on the on input event. So we'll change the, uh, the event for the, the binding. So it's not just on change, but when it's actually when you're actually typing. Uh, and then I think I'm also going to set autofocus just so that the cursor is in the uh, input uh, when, when you, uh, when, once you show the widget on the screen. And I think that should do it. So that should set up the, the, you know, the filter text box. Uh, but now I need to actually do the filtering. So how do I do that? Well, I'm going to just add a property down here below. This will be a property that returns an iQueryable of movie. Okay? And this will be our filtered movies property. And what it's going to return is we're going to take our, um, our DB context and get the movies off of the, uh, the DB context. And we will just filter to, the, to specific ones. We'll add a where clause here where the movie, and then we'll add a little lambda expression here, where the movie title uh, contains our title filter. Okay, you get that? See how that works? So this Will, this filtered movie property will then return a new iQueryable based off of the iQueryable that Entity Framework Core is giving us so that we can query the database. And this new iQueryable is going to um, filter the movie list to the ones that have the, the title filter in its, in its actual title. Okay? So up above, instead of our, the items for our um, quick grid being uh, directly from the DB context, we'll use the filtered movies that we just set up. OK, and let's go ahead and rebuild that. Looks like that's not something we can just hot reload in, but uh, we can rebuild to see those changes. And let's see what we got. OK, so now we have this little, see this little hamburger menu now next to our title column. If we click on that, we get a little text box. Um, let's filter for, I don't know, ghost movies. And there we can see we only have Ghostbusters. Our paginator has updated. It's only got one page. There's only one movie that's showing up. Or if we wanted movies that have, um, I know, periods in their name, <laughs> I guess. So ET is now the only movie that shows up. All right, so that's how you can use QuickGrid to quickly connect to some data, display it, filter it, sort it, um, you know, format it nicely for the users. Pagination is supported. Um, these are just some of the things that the built-in Blazor QuickGrid component can do. If you'd like to see all of its capabilities, there's a really nice uh, demo site at aka.ms slash blazor slash QuickGrid. Okay, and this is a little demo site that uh, has all sorts of quick grid examples. You know, here's one that's showing um, uh, gold, uh, Olympic medal performance from a variety of countries. It shows you how you can collect, connect to various data sources, how you can set up virtualization so you can render, you know, enormous data sets. Like here, we're rendering 22,000 rows by only rendering the rows that are that are currently visible. It's a very 
fast and flexible data grid component that you can uh, that helps you get going uh, quickly. So that is how you can take your Blazor web app, easily connect it to some data, and then display it using built-in Blazor components.